Good morning, SML, and happy Friday. Welcome to the first episode of Eminem in the Morning with a slightly updated logo. This is actually episode six. Uh, so we're still going. We're still here, despite, you know, people not believing in me. That's fine. Welcome. Uh, thanks for listening. Matt, how's go- how you doing? I'm good, man. A lot of things happened in the SML recently, so I'm excited to talk about it. Oh, we are getting ready for a playoff push. It is week 10, I think, uh, as of what would now be yesterday. Um, and we're getting into it, man. We got a couple more weeks to go. I think um, I think next week we might have to do a uh, playoff preview or final playoff push preview. Um, but we're, yeah, we're really getting into the nitty gritty of this season. Yeah, man, a lot of good games going down. Uh, it's been been exciting. Seems like every week there's a, there's a few good games. There's a multi stream going on where you're watching multiple games at once. So uh, like an SML red zone, I love it. Speaking of good games, let's just get into it. We were gonna talk about Bomber here for a second. We're still gonna talk about him, but we were gonna, we came into this planning to record about oh, well, can anybody stop him? Well, meanwhile, like an hour ago, he lost. So. Um, that's going to change the tone a little bit. He lost uh, 31-28 to the new Patriots. Double rice, no beans. That was all wins, no losses. Um, and uh, that's only the second win on the year for the Patriots. I don't. I, I guess that's his second user game. Uh, I'm not sure if he played one before this, but I know he was on vacation before he, right after he came in. Um, yeah, I mean, Nick Chubb is a monster. Baker Mayfield is not. That's my takeaway. Yeah, I mean, Baker Mayfield threw three picks. Uh, not all of those were Baker Mayfield's fault necessarily, but he overthrew some balls, um, wasn't too accurate. Uh, Nick Chubb, I mean, what can you say? 145 yards, four touchdowns. He's just, I played against him recently. You need three guys there to tackle him because the first two guys are going are gonna to get thrown away and the third guy has to make the tackle um i was surprised that bomber didn't stick with chubb a little bit more due to the success that he was having um and new england doesn't necessarily have the most the best front seven uh but props to double rice no beans he hung in there he was down in this game he got a couple of nice picks let him back in it and he made the plays when he had to mac jones found Deontay Johnson for a real deep ball and uh, he just, I thought it was going to get picked but he threaded the needle and what a great game and what a great win Do you think this was a trap game or do you think it was Bomber not knowing what to expect from a new user or, I mean like explain this to me because I really don't have an explanation for it I don't think it was a trap game necessarily Uh, I think Bomber just got a little bit careless with the ball Um, I think he was trying to make passes that he probably shouldn't have tried to make I think the pick six to Jawan Williams, um, the first pick that he threw, he mentioned that he wasn't even looking on that side of the field. And I think he had Schwartz running a a double move route, which he absolutely loves that route. And I think he just assumed it was going to be open because it always is. And Jawan Williams is right there in a flat zone to pick it off. Uh, The the next pick, I think it was just a bad read. Um, He threw it right to the middle linebacker. Um, I'm not going to overreact with this loss to Bomber. Chubb looked so good. And I think when it matters... You won't see Baker Mayfield throw 21 times to Chubb's 16 rushes. He will just pound Chubb, and you will not be able to stop it. No, and nobody's been able to stop it. I mean, Nick Chubb is the leading back in the league um, by—now, this is a little bit skewed because not everybody's played this week. But currently by over 600 yards. Uh, He's the only one over 1,000, and he's over 1,600. He's got 24 touchdowns. He's played 10 games. I don't. I haven't had. A... I, I I don't have an answer for that. I don't. I mean, that's just that's beyond absurd. And Bomber's not the guy to spam it. You know, somebody else putting up those numbers, you'd think, okay, he's spamming the hell out of Chubb. He's not. I mean, yes, he's carried the ball 180 times already, um, and yeah, that's that's probably above the league average. But I mean. I, can you blame him? I can't. No, and I, I couldn't stop him. I just played him, and even when I had him stopped, he would just shrug off. the. I mean, it's not like he just would stiff-arm a guy and he would kind of trip and I'd have another guy come in. No, he would just 
truck the guy off of him, like throw him to the side like he's made of paper, and then do the same to the next guy, and like eventually you just hope that you get his legs, like you get the, the leg tackle animation. I've never seen anything like it, probably in Madden ever when it comes to running backs. I used Derrick Henry a lot thinking I was going to take the Titans this year. He did not do the things that even Nick, that Nick Chubb is doing. It's crazy. Okay, final point about Chubb, um, and then we'll move on. Um, do you, you're bomber now, okay? You just took your first loss, so the undefeated season's off the table. Um, you're still playing for the one seed. That's still, I mean, that's still a really tight race, so that, that could go either way. Do you consider putting Chubb on a pitch count? Like, okay, I'm not going to run the ball with him more than 12 times or something, unless I need to, or maybe just against bad teams or teams you expect to beat. Um, because it's going to be an issue if you have to, I don't know, who the, I guess it's not Hunt. I don't know who the backup running back is. Um, Chubb is the best player in the league right now, and it's going to be an issue if he goes down with an injury. Yeah, here's my thought on that. I don't think that he puts him on a pitch count playing games because uh, he's fighting for that one seed. He doesn't even have the division locked up yet. Um, I mean, I have three losses. He only, he only has one, he has, and he beat me once. So, I mean, he doesn't, but he kind of does. Uh, but his schedule's not that easy. He has the Ravens twice. That that owner has looked good in glimpses. He's got QP next. Um, he's got uh, Lawyer. So, I, but what I think is going to happen is I think that he should maybe just not even practice Chubb. I mean, he doesn't need experience. The guy's like 97 overall, I think. Um, what do you need the XP for? I would just bench him in practices, but I would still use him regularly in the games until seating or the division is locked up see my thought is i'm not worried about practice because if he goes down for one game i mean practice injuries are just one game you know whatever um the more concerning issue is probably um uh fatigue which you know care i i don't know i haven't looked at it i don't know if fatigue's really gonna be an issue as much as they say it's going to uh but i mean chubb's getting 18 carries a game um, eventually, that's going to add up. That's going to be over 300 carries this season. Um, I'm just, I'd be worried about having Chubb on low fatigue heading into the playoffs. Maybe you want to save those legs and uh, keep them fresh for the playoff push. Yeah, and if, last point here. If I'm Bomber, I would rather be the two, three, four. I would rather be the two through seven seed and have Nick Chubb and be the one seed and not have Nick Chubb. His He will become a, an entirely different team and a much more beatable team if Nick Chubb is hurt, regardless of the seed he is. So it's a good point. Now, I'm not saying Nick Chubb's the only reason that the Browns are winning games, but he's a big part of it. Um, yep. And I mean, even in that game, he just lost. Uh, he, he was struggling to throw the ball, uh, and Nick Chubb still had four touchdowns, uh, and he only lost by three. Absolutely. All right, so that there down goes the uh, the final remaining undefeated team. Uh, the reason the Browns were the final un, uh, undefeated team, I can't speak tonight for some reason, um, is because the Jets, before they played somebody you would consider a tough opponent, have lost. The previously undefeated Jets fall to seven and one as they take a beating by the hands of the Colts, forty-eight to twenty-one. There were already questions based on the schedule because it was not a great schedule. Uh, now there's going to be a lot of questions when you lose to a 5-4 and four Colts team as, as handily as you did. Now there's going to be a lot more questions. Are the Jets for real? Because you're sitting at 7-1, and one, but I, I don't know. Yeah, I... I've talked a lot about DW and the Jets. You know, we had him on the show um, fairly recently, and we talked about him. And I said I needed him to beat somebody to prove himself. Um, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take say that. Well, he lost to Mike, so now he has to do this and this to prove himself. He's still in the same spot. He lost a game. Anybody can lose a game. Uh, and Joku's hurt. Although Tyler Croft caught seven balls for 152 yards and his replacement. Um, so. Uh, I'm not quite sure how much that actually had to do with it. I think the bigger story here is Mike. Um, quietly, Mike is putting up a good season, um, and I don't think it's getting talked about very much. He's five and four, and I know how, how do you call that a good season? But he has, um, 
you know, he played you. It looked like it. He played you tough. Um, he just beat the breaks off of field, which avenges his loss er to field earlier in the season, which was a much closer affair. He's at five, five and four, sitting on top of the AFC South with a big game coming up against the Jaguars. So I think Mike is the story here, and I think he's actually a, a real contender for that division. Um, and DW probably just got caught looking ahead to Faz. Yeah, I think it's it's a product of um, it's the I mean it's the AFC South. They're so bad on paper at least this year. I know uh, Coop has been winning. Mike is five and four. Um, the Titans just beat the Chiefs. So I mean it's not like they're all trash and they're all gonna just beat up each other and those are the only wins they're gonna get. They're gonna beat other teams, but it's like there's really no question it's the worst division in the league so i don't, I don't really think that anybody's going to be talking about really anybody in that in that division until they start beating the top guys or yeah, you know win absolutely. a playoff game or something absolutely yeah and i think i think the most impressive thing in the story here is just exactly how it's not that you know if mike beat if dw lost at 24 21 you know three or four points but he lost by I'm going to do some quick on the fly math here. 27 points. Um, that's a beat down from a five and four opponent who I did just talk up, but still five and four, five and four opponent who hasn't had a ton of success lately. Um, it's an ugly loss, but he has a chance to redeem himself. If he comes in and maybe he doesn't even beat Faz, but plays him tough. Um, I, I think that's a, that's a redemption. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, we're going to find out about this jets team. Um, as he faces six likely or at least leaning that way playoff teams uh in the final nine games um uh, and maybe maybe seven if you want to count the jaguars in there in, in the in a fight for their division um so yeah, i mean listen even if he loses all of those games he's still 10 and 7 you know that might be good enough for the playoffs that remains to be seen um as right now the seven seed is uh six and three u so um i don't know uh it's really gonna be tough i mean he's gonna have to win one maybe two maybe more of those games to make the playoffs and that's that's gonna be crazy to uh be talking about after a seven and zero start yeah he's certain he's got you right after faz so um that's a game that I'm sure he would love to have had to have be eight have eight wins going into this little uh, back to back streak against AFC East powerhouses. But um, we'll, we'll get to see what DW is made of, which is what we've all been wanting to see since he got off to this hot start. Yeah, I mean, in the past he's been a borderline playoff team, a ten and six, a nine and seven kind of guy. Um, I don't know that you can circle wins on his schedule anymore. Um, I think at the start of the season, you could have pretty much circled all of those. I think after seven weeks, I think we would have circled the Colts. I don't know if I'm even going to circle the Jaguars at this point. Um, Coop is uh, underrated in my opinion, and I might be a little biased because it took a 105-yard pick six to beat him um, on my end. But, I mean, he. let's see. He's got... after you he, circle the Eagles? Yeah. Who, uh, well, who knows? I mean, Tiny has made the playoffs. I think he made the playoffs twice last cycle. So that Eagles team is not great, but I mean, I, I still think DW is favored. I just don't know if I can circle that win. Um, after he plays me, he goes to the Texans. I think that's the only one that I'm going to circle on the rest of his schedule. That's fair. Tiny did just play Dan tough. So, um, and, and again, I don't. I, I'm not looking at Dan's record when I when I talk about him. He's good. I don't care what the record says. And Tiny played him tough, so I'm I'm okay with that. So I mean, you're going in now, your final nine games of the season, and you've got what eight games that are potentially toss-ups, um, two of which you're heavily favored in, or favored in at least a little bit, and the rest, I mean, is really just a coin flip, or or you're not favored which is really going to be tough. Um, and as we've talked about, this AFC is loaded. Um, I think it's going to take 11, 11 wins to get that seven seed. 
Yeah, I think RD leaving really helped a little bit and lessened the requirements for the getting in the AFC playoffs. But I I agree, there's still so much talent here. There's there's more talent there's more ta uh, talent than there are seeds and spots in the playoffs. So uh, I agree. I do I, personally being in the AFC, I'm looking at having to win at least 11 games to get in. That's my target. Uh, so I certainly agree. Yeah, and I mean I'm in the AFC too, so I'm I'm circling 11. That 11 is my minimum goal every season because 10 and 7 I'm not going to be happy with my chances at, at the playoffs um, at least as the AFC looks right now all right moving on I know I said we weren't going to talk about the AFC South but let's talk about a team from the AFC South um, <laughs> the uh, I mean listen I said we weren't going to talk about them until they started beating the top opponents and the Tennessee Titans just beat the Chiefs um, and prime and field and that is field's first win over his brother in um i'm gonna say a little under two calendar years it was madden 20 that he beat him last wow yeah i did not know that little tidbit um i didn't see that game um I don't know what I was doing. I might have been bowling or something. I didn't actually see it, so I, I was super shocked. I, I wasn't in chat. I didn't hear the buzz. I just happened to go into Daddy Leagues, and I saw that he won, and I was extremely confused and thought Daddy Leagues was broken. Um, and then I heard he went for two and kind of sort of I watched the game back a little bit. Um, that's a really impressive win, but I still don't know how I feel about it because the week before, he played Faz really tough, but he's lost to Coop. He's lost to the Jets. Um, he lost to the Seahawks, so I I don't know what to say about this Titans team. He's really he's three and six. He beat Prime. He lost to Faz by a touchdown, and this guy's three and six, and he just played two of the best players in the league. Really, really tough. Um, I I don't know what I don't really know what more to say. Who, which Titans team's going to show up? Yeah, um, he got his ass handed to him by the Colts. Uh, following that win over the Chiefs, which uh, flashbacks, but um, he then went and handed the smackdown of his own onto the Rams, who uh, you, many would think is a comparable team, uh, at least you know record-wise, maybe not talent or uh, stick skills-wise, but um, record-wise. Now you've got the Saints. That's going to be a tough game, but one you can compete in. The Texans, the Patriots is who knows where that Patriots team is right now. I have nowhere, no, no judge of how that team is. Then you've got the Jaguars in a must-win divisional game. You get Steelers. That's going to be a good game too. Uh, both teams that love to run the ball. Uh, 49ers. I think that's a winnable game. Easy. You got the Dolphins, which I, I can lay an egg here and there too. So who knows? And then you got the Texans again. So you know what? I mean, is eight wins is nine wins out of the question no i don't think it is no i don't either you know he's one thing he's got going for him is mike has a tough schedule there in indianapolis so even though he's two and a half games up because he did he does have five wins and he also beat uh field um or excuse me i guess they they uh did they split i think they split yeah they split so uh he's up two games on him um but mike has a really pretty tough schedule on the flip side the jaguars are sitting at three and five and they don't really have a tough schedule he's got the niners the falcons the rams his next three games then he's got the titans again then he gets the texans then the jets who who knows what that what's going to happen there we called that a toss-up but just a minute ago and then the patriots and then the colts honestly the jaguars could end up i think with 10 wins potentially so I, if i'm field uh, one, I got to get Derrick Henry healthy. He was not; he did not play against the Rams. I, I think that was just a practice injury. He should be back. I'm assuming he probably won't be practicing full pads before this Saints game. Um, so here's the thing. Fields playing really good football, just not consistent football. And he needs to figure out that consistency piece. And, and I would love to see him make the playoffs. I just don't know if he can do it with the way Coop is playing and his easy schedule. So we can't talk about the Titans without mentioning that right after he beat the Chiefs, he smelt the blood in the water, and in a super win-now move, he traded his first-round pick away, which um, at the time he was 2-5, and five, I believe. So that's like, do, why would you do that at 2-5? and five? But he traded away his first-round pick, um, and he got back his second-round pick, so you'd think, 
realistically, you're probably trading back 30 to 45 spots. Um, and he brought in Rob Gronkowski and Antonio Brown in a super win now move. He smelt the blood in the water. He knows he's in the weakest division. He knows that he can win this division, and he thinks those two vets can can really help. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this trade. Um, I I don't see the I don't see Antonio Brown exactly where he fits. Uh, you've got. AJ Brown, you've got Julio Jones, you've got two fantastic receivers, uh, Josh Reynolds, a decent slot. You could even slot Marcus Johnson in there. Um, I feel like you could get by with those two and hold on to your first. He did need a tight end. I don't know if Rob Gronkowski. I didn't realize he was just normal dev, um, but I, that makes sense. These guys are on one-year deals, uh, at least Gronk is, and I think an AB is too, they both are. Are you really gonna lock them up long-term, these older guys? Um, and you just gave away a first-round pick that you could have used, on, especially at, with only two wins when you traded for him, you could have, you were looking at that pick as being something you could, if you wanted to replace Tannehill, you, you might've had a shot to do that. And if you, wanted to be, if you wanted to get your slot receiver or your tight end, you had a good chance to get one of those. I'm just not quite sure I understand. Maybe he felt, he figured things out and he could win that division and make the playoffs and he certainly can but mm -hmm. I, if he doesn't that first round pick looks mighty juicy for Pauly. i'm gonna imitate his brother here for a second i love the trade and here's why um it, listen i don't love that you had to give up your first they tried to do it with the second round pick uh but field forgot that he didn't have a second round pick so they did the first and the second swap um but I, I love it, and here's why. Because nobody is going to think that Field is a real a real Super Bowl contender. Um, I think if you polled everybody, he might come in like 10th in the AFC. Um, and that might be generous, just based on last cycle. Um, however, Field is a Hall of Famer. He has won a Super Bowl in the past. I know it was like 40 seasons ago, but it happened. Um and he's in a winnable division. You know what? If he can put together a couple of wins here down the stretch and make a push for the playoffs, if he makes the playoffs, it's an it's a win. I don't I don't care because I I don't care what happens in the playoffs, but if you make the playoffs because of that trade or at least in part because of that trade, it's a win in my book. Um and um yeah, you know, you you maybe overpaid a little bit. Uh I th especially if you keep losing um at, at the 300 uh, win rate that you are right now. But, um, you know, I just, I love it because it, it's, that's, um, it, I don't know a good way of describing it, but to me it just feels like, like attack mentality. You know what? I don't care that you're three and six. I care that you're now going for that division title. You smelled it. You can get there. You're only two games back. We've got nine games left to play. Um, actually, you have uh eight games left to play but um still i mean that's that's half the season uh i i really like the trade a lot actually yeah i mean I, if, if he makes the playoffs um then yeah for sure great trade that that first round pick isn't as highly coveted as as it would be if he stayed the course of where he is now um but in my you know just playing contrary to what you just said i think he could have won the division without making that trade he beat prime without those two guys he almost beat faz without those two guys uh in the games that he's had those two guys and maybe he's trying to fit them in i know you don't just get a guy and suddenly things start fitting but they haven't really had a whole lot of production uh since they got there i know it's only a small sample size but um yeah I, again if he makes the playoffs you can't knock the trade because he's in the playoffs and that's when you get in the playoffs you got a shot uh, I think just on the surface, judging it now, I don't think I would have done it. On the flip side, I I probably love to trade even more for Pauly. Um, people have not been too kind to his team building skills, myself included. Uh, but now you're going to end up with two first round picks, one of which might be like 18 or 19, um, or it could be top 10. I mean, it's really got the potential to be I either way there. Um, but I mean, yeah, Gronk and, and AB, they were just sitting on the bench and they're, 
you know they're both 32 plus so yeah it's a hey it's a great trade you had to give up your second round pick for it but you, i mean that you basically just traded up 45 spots for nothing um and uh you know it's not you might be onto something about these two guys maybe not helping as much as everyone thinks they will gronk uh has only had five catches for about 70 yards uh in two games ab has three catches for about the same so uh not a ton of production right now but it's still something is better than nothing and i'm gonna take antonio brown over i don't care who who your wide receiver three is I'll, i'll take him over him um the only i i can't think of a single team where Antonio Brown wouldn't be the best wide receiver three. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, in, you know, when you get into the red zone, you know, Gronk gives you that extra weapon so they can't just focus on Henry. And, and the same with Antonio Brown at any point in the game and anywhere on the field, you can't just focus on Henry. So um, I just want to see how it pans out. I mean, Field obviously made the trade for a reason. He felt like he could do something with those two guys. So go out there and do it. Uh, I'm excited to see how that translates. Um, going to Pauly for a second, I love it because I don't think Pauly was using Antonio Brown. I'm, I'm, sh- I'm sure he's in love with Scotty Miller. I think he had him last year on the Dolphins. I think that was the guy that he traded for. Um, and then O.J. Howard is somehow still star dev in this game, even though the guy in real life, I don't think he's touched a football in a while. Um, he's a young, athletic. He, he's basically Gronk uh, in the Madden game, but younger, faster. Uh, so that's a great trade for Pauly to unload two guys he's not even using and get a first round pick out of it yeah um overall i you know i gotta give both teams an a i probably i give an a plus i'm gonna give field an a minus that just highly dependent on how the season goes if he wins four games uh instead of the three that he has already won uh, i'm gonna be retracting that statement but anyways yeah, move, give me an a, sorry give me an a plus since you gave a letter grade it's only fair give Give Polly an A plus for me. Give uh, Field a B plus with the condition that the the result of his season will change that one way or another. I think if he doesn't, I mean, if it's a top ten pick, it probably goes to a D minus or something like that. But, anyways, moving on. Um, so if you guys remember, a couple of weeks ago we drafted our SML fantasy teams, uh, and that was just picking uh, a quarterback, two two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, a flex a kicker and an individual defensive player um, from SML teams based on SML stats. They were going to get uh, fantasy points awarded by Daddy Leagues. Shout out to Daddy Leagues. Uh, throw us some money, maybe. Um, and uh, all right, so I was tallying up the points because we're at the mid-season point. What we want to do now is give both of, uh, both of us an opportunity to drop uh whoever we want and sign whoever we want so how this is going to work is the points that the player got in the first half those points are yours you can't get rid of them they're they're on your team um but if let's just say you drafted a tight end that you thought was going to be really spammy but then was replaced by a 64 year old a 64 overall rookie um that didn't happen to me it's just a totally random example uh, you can drop him you keep those those points from the first half and then whatever points the the new tight end that you sign gets in the second half you keep those so basically just like real life fantasy um it's it's a little more challenging because you have to go through and count but uh, that's what we're doing right now so i ran the totals and i didn't tell you ahead of time so here's i did not run the totals for kicker or for idp and tucker so i have justin tucker on my team okay um and i looked at his point total he has nine total points which when i tell you that the the current score uh is going to look like nothing so i'm not even sure kickers are worth doing next season i'll probably uh, we'll probably keep them this year um however defensive players don't do points like on daddy leagues and i didn't think about that ahead of time uh because i didn't have a daddy leagues to look at but idps do not have points assigned to them on daddy leagues regardless of what they do so i wanted to talk to you and see if you wanted to come up with a point scale um maybe 
after we were finished recording or next week or something um and then assign those points to them based on what they've done already because like we i had isaiah simmons you have tremaine edmonds both very impactful defensive players however daddy leagues doesn't give them fantasy points so um they that's not reflective of our current scores right now so yeah that's do you a shame just, I, I... yeah i know you do want to just drop the defensive players or do you want to come up with uh with the scoring system uh after we're finished recording why don't we try to come up with a scoring system and if it's not a lot of work let's keep it and if we struggle to find something that makes a whole lot of sense or doesn't really become too convoluted we can just drop them okay well on that caveat we're gonna just keep our defensive players we're not gonna um and if we go forward uh next season and, and maybe do a four team league or something like that uh we're just gonna not we're just gonna keep the defensive players we have all season just because that's gonna be more work that i feel like doing um Anyways, so uh, to to re go over the teams, and I want to see if I can. No, I can't because I don't have it saved as a picture. But um, the teams as they stand right now, I have Patrick Mahomes as my quarterback. I have Nick Chubb. That I mean, that's the only one that matters. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson, Tyler Higby. We're not going to talk about it. Jamar Chase, Justin Tucker, and Isaiah Simmons. Uh, Matt, you have Kyler Murray, Dalvin Cook, Austin Eckler, Stephon Diggs, Terry McLaurin, Travis Kelsey, Ezekiel Elliott, Tyler Bass as your kicker, and Tremaine Edmonds as your IDP. So I ran the totals this morning. Um, who would you say is the best player in the league right now? Uh, Nick Chubb. Okay. He's on my team, and that pretty much makes the entire... Uh, that's almost accounting for the entire difference between our points. Um, so I'm in the lead right now with 922 points. This is through week nine, so this is not counting uh, what what has happened in the last 20 in the last 12 hours. Um, so it doesn't count. Chubb's four touchdowns from today. <laughs> no. His <laughs> 150 yards and four touchdowns. No, that is not reflected in his 267 points so far, which, like I said, I only have 900. So that's like a third of my team right there. Uh, and your total, Matt, is 772. I'm going to, uh, I didn't, I forgot to send this to you ahead of time. So I'm going to do it now. Um, send you the points so that you can look at and decide if you want to drop somebody or not i just sent it in discord um all right so i guess i'll go first um yeah i'm a little disappointed and i knew this was a boomer bust pick when i did it tyler higby has seven points on the season which is exactly 260 points less than nick chubb <laughs> So I'm going to be dropping Tyler Higby tonight. Get off of my team, Tyler Higby. Thank you. Um, listen, my thought process was sound because we saw what Colton and, and the Rams did and um, last cycle, and uh, Colton comes out and decides to smash my heart out and not start Higby. He's starting a 64 overall rookie. So it is what it is, but Tyler Higby, you are gone and I think to replace you as my tight end, um, I have to look a little bit harder. I'm between a couple of people. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with my boy, Mark Andrews. He's fourth in the league in receiving yards right now. Um, seven touchdowns, which is probably average for your top 15 receivers. Um and he's on my Ravens, so I love him. Mark Andrews, welcome to my team. Yeah, and he just had a big game versus you, too. Um, so you got to see firsthand what he can do. I did. Yes, I did. And I did not enjoy it. <laughs> I won, but I did not enjoy it. All right. Well, so, I guess that leaves me, huh? Yeah, that puts the ball in your court. And you can, I mean, we're not, like, putting a limit on this. Uh, so you can drop as many people. If you want to drop your whole team, you drop your whole team. Uh, we'll just go back and forth doing it. You know, I li you know look, I like my team. I did a little bit of looking um, at my team before the for the broadcast. Uh, I, I like the team. You know, Diggs is underperforming, but I trust Faz going to figure that out. 
Um, and, uh, you know, same with Kelsey, uh, but although he didn't do as bad as Higby. But my real weak, weak link, and I didn't see this coming, is uh, Terry McLaurin. A nice 27 points there. I'm not sure what NYT is doing. I'm not sure if this is a Jordan Love problem or just a scheme problem, but he doesn't seem to have any confidence in him. Um, so goodbye, Terry. Uh, I may, I may, he's got all the talent in the world, so I may regret that, but I'm going to say get out of here and I am going to welcome to my fantasy team, Mr. Christian Kirk of the Arizona Cardinals. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people saw Christian Kirk coming at the start of the cycle. Uh, he's um, theoretically the fourth best wide receiver on that team. If you're counting AJ Green, he might be fifth best um, because Andy Isabella is really fast. Um, not a high overall, but he's really fast. Uh, Rondell Moore, fast uh, rookie, and you're going to develop him. You got DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, like, come on. And uh, and and uh, AJ Green. So you know what? I don't think anybody saw Christian Kirk coming. And and Dump was uh, he had him on the block there for a little bit, uh, trying to trade him. I guess he's gonna keep him now because we just saw um, you know the numbers that he just put up. So I think it's a good pick. I, I know that uh, he's he, listen. I mean, he might be going up against a lot of corners. So yeah and he's got 11 touchdowns that's the big thing uh, he's scoring touchdowns um and you know one thing i really looked at was even if you take away he just had a game where he had 12 catches even if you even if he didn't play that game scratch the 12 catches he still leads the team in reception so um that one game didn't change how he's utilized in this offense so um sign me up for that and goodbye scary terry Okay, my, back to my turn. That uh, so, well, uh, one last thing about McLaurin is uh, <laughs> I saw that when I was tallying up the points this morning. I was like, twenty-seven points for Terry McLaurin. Um, he's fourth on the team in receptions, which is bon just bonkers. I guess NYT just doesn't throw it to wide receiver one a lot, which I understand because a couple of seasons, a couple of cycles ago, I think um, I just really never threw it to wide receiver one routes. Uh, so it, it's probably more a scheme thing than anything else, in, in my opinion. I agree. All right, so back to me. I'm a little disappointed in how Justin Jefferson has played. Uh, Justin Jefferson, which let me pull up the stats real fast. First of all, he's on the 4-4 four and four Vikings, whose offense has been not good. Uh, he's averaging 29 points a game, which is good. I mean, that's borderline top 10. But 24th in pass yards, 21st in total yards, uh, and he's a definite run-first team. Uh, Justin Jefferson has only had 19 catches, under 300 yards, and only two touchdowns. So uh, I'm giving you the boot. Get off of my team, Justin Jefferson. Um, and in response to Justin Jefferson, um, I really want to sign Marquise Brown. But then I'd have three Ravens on my team, and I feel like that's probably not great. So I'm going to not sign Marquise Brown because I don't want to look like a homer. And also because stacking your team with with uh, players from one team is not great in regular fantasy, or so I'm assuming it's not great in this fantasy either. Um, so instead of Anton uh, er, sorry, Antonio Brown, instead of Hollywood Brown, I'm going to go with the slightly worse, but same speed, shorter, I think, maybe taller, I don't know, lighter-skinned Hollywood Brown, also known as Anthony Schwartz, because I'm Jewish, and he has a Jewish name, and also he's third in the league in receiving yards, so welcome to my team, Anthony Schwartz. Yeah, that's a good pick. Uh, I think he's, Bomber looks for him a lot. Um... Bomber not only loves him on streaks to get behind the defense with that speed, but uh, like I mentioned earlier, he does like the double moves um, with him as well. Uh, if he gets space with the double moves, he can turn up field and, and, and get separation that way and get big yardage. So I like that pick just because if you watch a Bomber stream, Mitchell Schwartz, Mitchell Schwartz is his guy. 85 change of direction, 97 speed, rookie, 20 years old so he's gonna develop man he's only a 70 overall um he's six foot and has 97 speed that is borderline dk metcalf i didn't realize he was that tall um 
only 79 catching, only 77 catch in traffic, only 75 spec catch, but he's a rookie, which I don't really care about for this exercise, but you know what? He's going to be good. Uh, Bombers already got him almost 40 catches and uh, eight touchdowns. So that speed uh, going up in a, a division that maybe doesn't have the best corners uh, other than the Ravens. So um, I like it. I want him on my team. Yeah, and I'm actually I'm staying put. I like my team. Um, I have been de- I was debating uh, earlier today. Uh, do I want to switch out Hunt or switch Zeke out and put Hunt in? Um, then I started crunching the numbers, and, and Zeke isn't getting in the end zone as much as Hunt, but he's running just as efficiently. And and, and DW is getting into that tougher part of the tougher part of the schedule. Um, so I need to I need to I pulled back the reins a little bit, and I'm going to stick with Zeke. Everybody else on my team, I feel very very good about, and uh, I'm going to hope that the Kyler Murray to Christian Kirk connection is going to put me over the top and, and help me come back. And, and maybe Chubb getting benched, well, that would really help too. Yeah, um, Bomber, I changed my opinion. Run the wheels off of Chubb, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so, all right, so for the remaining, uh, what are we in week 10, I guess? So for, for the final eight and a half weeks, you have to make up 150 points. I mean, definitely doable, um, unless Chubb keeps running like he is running, in which case he is uh, easily going to be the highest scoring team. Uh, player and I don't remember what pick I picked him with, but it had to have been like my third, my my second pick. So I'm happy with it. All right, so we got Thursday night football here because we record this a uh, couple hours early. Thursday night football starting, so we're gonna be um, hurrying up and we are moving on to our locked in picks, uh, recapping last week. Matt, I'm starting to think you're not very good at this. Um, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> another another uh, episode where you only get one win out of your four picks. Um, and you picked the Bears to win week six. That was your only win. Um, you picked the Packers in week seven, the Saints in week eight, the Patriots in week nine. All of those teams lost. Um, I didn't do much better. I went two and two. I'm fine with that. And that brings our uh, our standings right now. You are sitting at two and five. I am five and two. So I'm happy with it. Uh, I know you're probably not, but all right, let's pick for weeks 10 through 13. You get to go first. Let's lose losing. or go first. All you're, right. Yeah. Your I honor, like your honor, it, your, uh, it, your and I, and I want to make one caveat here. I did not know that double rice, no bean was going on vacation. I missed that. He would have smoked old man woods and I would have been two and two, but I digress and I moved to week 10 and you're going to have to give me the Jags, Coop's Jags over Mike's Colts. Okay. Um, yeah, that was my first pick, but I have a backup pick. That's fine. Um, I like that pick, and I thought it was a risky pick. I didn't love it, which is why I didn't lock it in as my first pick. Um, but it's a good pick because it's a toss-up game, and who the hell knows with that division. So I'm, I, I like it. And uh, just so you guys know, oh crap! Wait, we're pi- oh, I'm so confused. What? Oh, I missed. I miss. Uh, I misunderstood. Okay, you said week ten. I accidentally penciled that in in week eleven. Um, <laughs> so I was very confused there for a second because I was I, my next pick was a team that had already played. All right. Um, so just so you guys know, like we said, we record these uh, twelve hours in advance. Um, so any games that go down Thursday night, we're not going to know about. So when we're picking Thursday game, if there's a chance that in this first week games are played before this episode airs, just know that we're not cheating. It's eight 30 right now on Thursday night. Yeah. And I'm clearly not cheating. I'm two and five. Yes. And you're in the West coast. So I don't care that it's five thirty. <laughs> whatever. Um, <laughs> so, all right. My pick, uh, you made it easy for me, and I appreciate that. I'm taking the Bills over the Jets. They're both 7-1. and one. It's for the division lead. The winner of this game walks out of the division uh, with a good head start towards that uh, likely top three seed. Um, and I'm going to I'm gonna take the Bills. I just I, – I, I don't know what I've seen from DW yet. And um, I – 
Faz is undefeated in user games. So it, it's pretty easy for me. Yeah, and, and just to re, you know reiterate an, an additional rule to this is we're trying to avoid games where there's a clear favorite. Um, and, and I think in this case, we don't know what DW is. I mean, he stumbled against Mike, but I'm going to throw that out the window. Everybody struggles. So I think, you know, even though I think Faz is probably favored in this game, it's two seven and one teams fighting for first place in the division. We don't know much about one of them. So I love it. I, I'm, I'm just jacked up for this game. Oh, it's going to be tons of fun. Uh, and we actually get to see a test of DW that's not against the computer. Uh, according to Daddy League's the Bills are one point favorites uh, over under set at 52. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're both averaging over 30 points a game. I mean, that's going to be a fun one. We're going to get a, get some real answers about these Jets here coming up. Absolutely. All right, on to week 11. I will let you go again since you were three games behind me. Just oh, That's nice of you. Hopefully I don't pick yours again, but... Uh... On this one, I have decided that you are going to give me, as my lock, the Ravens over the Bears. I think this Ravens owner is a pretty solid player. I expect him to still be in the league when this game comes up. I know October's on a leave for somewhat of a determined time, but um, I, I give me the Ravens over the Bears. That is a ballsy pick because, yes, the Bears just lost. Um and yes, they have two losses on the year, but the Ravens are also just coming off a loss where they scored 30 points and still lost by 20. So um, I like it. You know what? I'm here for it. I, I'll also, just so you guys are aware, we're avoiding picking clear favorites, but if you want to pick a clear underdog, go for you. I don't care. Absolutely. If you're going to, I mean, just throw out the... Texans against the Chiefs? Sure, go for it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my pick is, and I'm really uh, on the fence about this one. I don't know which direction it's going to go, but I think I do, and I don't know why I'm making this my lock. It's just such an interesting game that I want to have extra focus on it. I'm locking in the Jaguars over the 49ers. Both teams only have three wins at the time of recording. Uh it's a week 11 game it's gonna be important probably more so for the jaguars i'm gonna lock on the jaguars because i got that 49ers first round pick and i want it to be high yeah a little extra intrigue in there for you i will say though fig is playing well he beat the bears uh he, he played dump real close only lost by four i just beat the rams uh, I think that's a good matchup and a, and a definitely a fair pick. That'll be a good game. And and, and Coop really needs that game because, I mean, he's in the middle of a slugfest in that in that division. So that'll be fun. Yeah, the uh, 49ers have not lived up to my expectations, but uh, because Figs has made the playoffs before. He's been a playoff team. He's also drafted first overall. Um, but he's got a really good Madden team, and I think it's going to develop and be a really good team moving forward. But I'm a little disappointed in his performance so far this season. Personally, he, I'm not disappointed because, like I said, I have his, I have his first round pick. But uh, he he is improving, and that's what you like to see. Um, you know, he he's really got off to a bad start with that really good team, but he is improving. I mean, losing to four to dump, and I'm pretty sure he didn't let dump score a single point in the first half. So maybe he's starting to figure things out uh and maybe he can make a late season push maybe not for the playoffs maybe but just improve going into next season if i'm being objective i want to see him improve but i'm not really much of an objective person so yeah um, not this season anyway <laughs> all right week 12 coming up and i'm taking the first pick this time because i'm in the lead i get to pick what i want to do i'm locking in the lions over the bears uh both teams right now seven and two both teams coming in who knows they could be seven and four they could be nine and two it's gonna be a really good game uh it's got some seating implications i think uh i think the bears are trying to win their division the lions likely have already won their division i mean not literally but uh you know they they have a three game lead over the next next closest guy i think um except for this bears team so it's it's gonna be for the division lead and whoever wins this i think's the favorite to win the division yeah that was my pick uh my basis was that 
QP was probably going to be coming off of two losses. He just lost to me. He plays Bomber next week. I assumed that was going to be a loss. Two losses in a row. Uh, not going to be tasting good for him. He's going to he will come back and make a statement against Future, who beat him for the first time, but that was the Jordan Go or the uh, Jared Goff Lions, and now it's the Justin Herbert Lions. I like that pick. It was actually mine. So I'm going to uh, look down and look at my backup here, and I'm going to go to the Thanos Bowl, and I'm going to take Faz over the seven and one bills over the six and two saints i like that pick too i think faz is the favorite i don't really know what to say about it because i don't have a read on the saints yet i've not seen any of their games i don't know who they've beat i just don't know what to expect from the saints team they're winning and i didn't expect them to so um i like the pick we'll see what happens and again you are three games behind so you get to pick for week 13 I love to pick the last one. All right. Well, I really just wanted um, the Lions that time. I really did. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a good thing you went first because that was mine. Um, so my la my pick for week 13, my lock, um, I just got done trouncing NYT for his misuse of Terry McLaurin, but I'm taking him. Give me the Washington football team over the uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Well, well, you repaid me by taking my pick. That's fine because, like I said, you are three games behind me. I don't mind giving that to you. Uh, I have a three-game lead. Uh, all right. So, yeah, I mean, that was my pick. Uh, Washington going up against the Raiders. This Raiders team, Jace move, who knows? I mean, another new guy that is, uh, I, I guess that team was like 4-2 and two when he took over, something like that. Uh, sitting at 5-4 and four right now. I don't know what – I've played in other leagues with him. I know he's a good player. Uh we haven't seen it yet, and maybe we'll will in this game, but we both like Washington in this game, and, and you know what? I think it's a good pick. All right, well, I'm going to do this for the first time in this uh, short history of this segment. I'm going to go back. I'm going to take the same team twice in a row. I'm going with the Lions over the Vikings in Week 13, another huge divisional game. Uh, the Lions won the first matchup. This is against D. Muse, who... You guys know, I mean, he made the Super Bowl two seasons ago. So he is not a pushover. Uh, however, QP just looks so good. Now he's got his quarterback. I'm taking him twice in a row. Yeah, I like that pick. Um, again, these are Thanos, it's a Thanos Bowl again. Um, and you've got two really good players. You you, you touched on Dom. Uh, but Dom's got to figure out Kellen Mond. That's really holding him back. Um, he's 4-4. Four and four. I think he'd be a lot better if he had a quarterback. Uh, but I, I think he's committed to Mond. He, you know, he's an athletic freak. Um, so that'll be an interesting game. Can Dom make a late push? He's not out of it in this division, not even close. Um, so can he make a push and get back in this division race and maybe sneak up and steal the North? Yeah, we talked about Mond a couple of weeks ago. Um, if you're going to stick with him, stick with him. I think he has to, um, the potential to develop really well. Um, he's really athletic, like you said. Uh, just got to stick with him. Just settle. I mean, deal with the bad throws here and there. Just dev him up, and he's going to be really good, I think. Um, speaking of that division, uh, yeah, I mean, he's third in the division right now, I believe, if Daddy Leaks will load. Um, he is. He is third in the division. The Packers have really fallen off. The Packers had a great start to the season, but they have since fallen to three and six now in last place in that division. Vikings holding steady at four and four, scoring twenty nine points a game, but giving up twenty nine points a game. Two and two on the at home, two and two on the road. They've been the most mediocre team this season. Their point differential is negative two. So it's like as close to zero as you can basically get without actually being one or zero. Um, he's going to rebound. He'll be fine. I, I, I think future being good really threw everybody for a loop. Yeah, and five of his last nine games are in the division. Um, and then when he's not playing in the division, he is playing. He's got Dan, who even though he's three and five, that... I mean, who knows? He's got the Ra he's, he, oh no, the Ravens beat him, so he's got Dan, and then he's got the Niners, winnable game. He's got me, winnable game, but that's going to be a good fight. Uh, and and then he's got the Rams, uh, so he's got winnable games um, outside of his division, 
and a ton of games to play in his division. Just take care of business, and, and you could see Dom win in that division somehow with Kellen Mond. Mm, he won't, but um, <laughs> I mean the Lions are going to win that division. I would put money on it. So <laughs> I, I can't. I too. can't believe I'm go- saying that the Lions are going to win that division in season one. Um, but he, the QP's just been so good with them. I listen. I put out a. a a season predictor like I, I predicted all 160 whatever games there are in a season i that's not even close to accurate but i i predicted every team uh and and all their games and i had the vikings coming out of the nfc now this was before we played a single game so a lot has changed um i'm a believer i just i i'm questioning what is going on in minnesota but that's a story for another time. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. We'll uh, we'll see if uh, Dom can uh, come back uh, f- from a four and four start. He's two and a half games back of his division right now. We'll see what happens. He's got some big games coming up. All right, Matt, you got anything uh, last to say, or do you want to go watch Thursday Night Football? No, I'm going to go watch the Seahawks and uh, uh, just get ready. You know, if any if any SML games get played tonight, I'll throw them up on my iPad and multitask. Uh, I love watching SML football. I'm a lot of good games, a lot of important games, uh, and SML is ramping up for a playoff push, and I and I'm here for it. I tried to make this uh, a faster paced episode, and because we hit a bunch of topics, uh, and I think I succeeded. We're under an hour still, so <laughs> um, we did it. <laughs> yeah. That's I guess that's the marker. Um, all right, guys. So one last thing. We are having a Halloween special coming up October 31st, 7 a.m. Spooky World will be in the house, uh, and that will be a fun like Halloween-themed episode talking about the SML with a Halloween spooky twist. Um, you're not going to want to miss that. Mark that on your calendars. October 31st, that's just, uh, what is that? That's less than four weeks away, three, a little over three and a half weeks away. It's going to be a fun one. Thanks for listening today, guys. Uh, We will be back next Friday. Until then, signing off. See you later.